All right, this is a quick video on um, installing multi-streamer using Docker. I've gone ahead and made a Docker image to make things a bit easier. Uh, I've got another video about you know installing on a VM regularly by you know downloading and compiling a custom nginx and installing Lua modules and so on. Uh, however, I have made just an easy mode. Uh, Docker image that uses and you can use Docker Compose to quickly get multi-streamer up and running so you can try it out. So uh, let's see here. If I go to my GitHub here, Docker dash multi-streamer. This is the repo. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, the repo has uh, tags that follow, you know, the upstream multi-streamer tags. And it's got a pretty, pretty long Docker file that takes care of installing all the dependencies, compiling everything you need all in one layer, uh, to try to produce a small Docker image. I think when it's all said and done, it's, it's something like an 80 meg image or so. Um, and within that, <clears throat> sorry. Within that repo is a Docker Compose file uh, for, let me bring this in a little bit to capture, there we go. So I forget how tiny 1280 by 720 is. Boop, there we go. And there's a Docker Compose file for, like I said, quickly getting up and running uh, with Redis and PostgreSQL. You know, all the dependencies is ready to go. Now this should not be uh, this Docker Compose thing, it's pretty okay um, as long as you're aware of the fact that everything is going to be unencrypted and you should make you know run it behind some kind of SSL terminator like HAProxy or Stunnel or Nginx or something, something that does SSL for you. Uh, so yeah, so we can just type uh, Docker Compose up and we'll pull down an image. Like I said, I try to make it uh, based off the Alpine image, and I, I'm i pretty sure that's the compressed size of my single layer right there is about 30 megs. Uncompressed, I'm pretty sure it's 80. I haven't checked recently, though, so it might be bigger. And yeah, the Docker Compose file, like I said, it sets up Rita, sets up PostgreSQL, and it includes a new... Um, uh, Basically, multi-streamer doesn't do its own auth. It relies on using some other service for authentication. This one includes a real tiny, real dumb authentication service where basically the first time you log in, if the user doesn't exist, it creates it and saves it, um, which is, you know, handy for just, you know, just getting going, you want to play with it. But uh, you should set it up to use like a real authentication thing of some type. But anyways, okay. And... There's a few things I'm realizing I need to change a little bit. Like, uh, it just blindly tries to apply all the different uh, SQL updates. And I wrote them in a way that it's never going to drop anything or mess with your data, so it's not a big deal. But I should really change this to, like, actually, you know, check, like, oh, okay, does this table exist? Oh, okay, don't worry about it, you know, kind of thing. Um, but anyways, uh, by default, this is listening on port 8081 uh, for the web interface. The IRC is on 667, and the RTMP is 1935. Those are all like fairly standard ports. Um, so on my machine, I've got this running on 192.168.59.11. Uh, and there I am. And I can just log in with anything. You know, off I go. Boom. You're up and running. Um, and so, yeah, by default, it doesn't support... Uh, it only supports custom RTMP, you know, style um, accounts. It doesn't support Facebook, Twitch, etc., because that requires, you know, set up on your part. Um, but that is, I try to make that, I think this is a little bit more straightforward to do, because basically you just have to define a bunch of environment variables. And I try to document every single environment variable uh, here. And try to, I mean, I actually did. Every single environment variable is listed in this file uh, with what they do. But the important things to pay attention to are the um, things like the 
uh, multi-streamer session secret. All session data to the client gets encrypted with this secret. Um, and I think the one in the composer file is like one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. And it, it could be anything, but you should make it something unique. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter the length, just something. Um, and these are probably the single most important um, entries here for making this work correctly. So basically, multi, you know, I run this behind an SSL terminator, right? And multi streamer, like, I, I'm not sure what, if there is some kind of protocol for saying, like, hey, you're behind SSL, whatever, here's the URL, you should tell people you're at, you know, kind of thing. So I have environment variables for that where you can set, you know, what is the public HTTP URL, right? So if you're running this behind Nginx and Nginx is providing SSL, you could punch in HTTPS colon slash slash, you know, whatever.com. Uh, the important thing here is for for the for these couple of environment variables like the public HTTP URL and the RTMP URL, um, if you're running this on its own domain or not running it on its own domain, doesn't matter. You you shouldn't go past like the domain level of your URL. So if you're running at stream.example.com, you can punch that in. If you're running at example.com slash stream slash one two three or something, just put in example.com. Don't worry about the uh, prefix because uh, that is done with a separate variable so if you were running under slash stream slash one two three that's where you put this is 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 in this environment variable and then specifying a database if you don't want to use uh if you so you can either a just link to a running postgresql container and have it be named postgresql and it'll pull out the environment variables and figure out what's got to do and you're good to go Otherwise, there's a bunch of variables you can set. Um, the only one that has the default is the port to connect to. Otherwise, you can you know you can specify the host, user, or pass name. Um, this will be running in Nginx, and Nginx does just an FYI. Nginx does not read your SE host file. It it strictly speaks. It strictly does DNS. So make sure that you have something that resolves on DNS, whether it's your local DNS public DNS, whatever, it has to resolve on DNS. Um, same thing with Redis. You can specify your Redis host and port. If you use not an IP address, make sure it's the host name that actually resolves via DNS somehow. And then, yeah, enabling your streaming services. Uh, over on the multi-streamer project, which let me uh, pull up a link here, I've got a wiki where I detail how to set up uh, all your different streaming services. So how to set up Facebook, how to set up Twitch, where I go over like where to go to make an app, you know, get an app key and ID and all that. And basically for the Docker version, all you gotta do is define some environment variables. So for Twitch, you know, you do your client ID or client secret, and then you have to specify which ingest server you want to use. Cause the idea goes that, uh, you know, your users probably don't know where your server is located, so you should pick an ingest server that's close to your server. Um, and again, that's that's all detailed here, uh, where I specify, like I have an example of using the Dallas, you know, ingest server. Um, YouTube, same concept, go make an app, get an ID, get a secret, country code, punch in your two character country code. Uh, that's used for pulling down um, categories. And then Facebook, go make an app, get your app ID, app secret. Uh, I set up so if you use client ID and client secret, that's fine, you know. Um, but like Facebook's terminology is app ID, app secret. Um, yeah, and then I guess I think the other important environment variables are if you run an SSL terminator in front of the IRC port, you should define this environment variable with true. Um, I don't have a logic that says like, oh, take one and make it true or whatever. Like you should write the literal text true. Uh, um, IRC force join is a pretty nice one to set to true. That makes it so if a user is connected via IRC and one of their streams goes live, they get auto join to the channel. They don't have to you know worry about it. Worker processes, um, that's just how many Nginx process to run, defaults to one. And yeah, everything else you could probably just leave alone. So that that's it. 
<laughs> that's that's how you run it. That's how you customize it. Assuming you've got Docker set up and all that. Um, like I said, I recommend running. You know, somehow putting this behind a thing that speaks SSL. And I also recommend switching out the auth server. There's a a uh, environment variable, multi streamer auth endpoint, where you just punch in like HTTP colon slash, slash you know adjust port slash whatever, and it will do auth there instead of with its own internal, you know, dummy read us one. Um, and I've got some example things for authing with an HD password file, authing against LDAP. You can write your own to auth against WordPress or like an IMAP server or something crazy. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. That's the idea is that you probably have something with users already and you just want to use that. Um, or like I said, if you just don't care, you know, you, you can do the Redis one and just have it. Again, it's it's pretty much open season if you do the Redis one. Anyone can just log in. Um, yeah, so that is about it. I do recommend reading all the you know wiki and stuff over here on the main multi-streamer project because I I took time writing out how to get everything set up, how it all works, and so on. Um, although, like I said, the the Docker image is meant to really really cut a lot of the time that it needs that you need to 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 spend setting all this up. Uh, yeah, hope that's helpful, and uh, have a good one. Oh, I said that way too fast. Have a good one. <laughs>